I want to uh, welcome Dev, uh, who's going to be talking about Fractal. So please take it away. Hey, uh, I'm Dave. We talk about Fractal, Post Quantum Recursive Snarks. This is joint work with Alessandro Chiesa and Nick Spooner. So let's dive into it. So as you saw in the title, it's going to deal with recursive snarks. So I'm going to assume everyone here is familiar with snarks. They may, may not be familiar with recursing them. Uh, though if you saw like Michael's, or part of Michael's talk earlier today, he started like, going into this, so this might be a recap. So recursion here means verifying a snark proof within a snark. So an example, what this comes up is verifying iterated function application, like f of f of x equals y. So here's an example of iterated function application. And the strategy for proving this is to prove it step by step. Or so first, you prove that f of z0 equals z1. And to check this, you just check the proof pi1. In the next iteration, you prove that f of z1 equals z2 and that the proof pi1 is valid. Therefore, when you check pi2, by induction, you know that z2 equals f of f of z0. And so repeat the same process for the next iteration where you prove f2 equals z3 and the proof for z2. And then by induction, you know z3 is fully valid. So recursion here has like uh, some nice properties. First, like the size of the statement that you prove is going to be independent of t, and the proof size is independent of t. Another nice property is that you can verify any intermediate state. So if you have a computation that goes on forever, like a blockchain, you can then verify the latest state. You don't have to wait until the blockchain is like over before you can verify anything. So some applications of recursion are succinct blockchains like Coda. In that context, f is your block transition function. And uh, like you, one way to do it is type the proposer, propo uh, include a proof of the block. Other applications like continuous verify over delay functions or snarks from MapReduce, and more like CE3 search for many examples. So that's one of like some more of the theory behind recursion. Like the cryptographic primitives that you want to build are incrementally verifiable computation, IBC, roughly what was on the previous slide, and proof carrying data, PCD. Basically, that's just like recursing on any sort of directed asynchronous graph. And so when can you recurse a snark? Well, there's this theorem from a couple years ago that Every adaptively secure, succinct verifier snark recurses. So you take a snark, you recurse it, and you will get pr proof carrying data. And moreover, this like compilation procedure preserves many nice properties. So a zero knowledge snark gives you zero knowledge PCD. Recursion sort of preserves your trust setup type. It doesn't introduce anything new. So if you have a circuit specific setup, your PCD will still be circuit specific. You have an updatable trust setup, your PCD will still have an updatable trust setup. And if you have a transparent snark, you'll get a transparent uh, PCD system. But what about being post-quantum? PCCT says nothing about this. So this is the first result of our work. Yes, recursion will preserve post-quantum security. If you start with a post-quantum snark and you recurse it, you'll get post-quantum PCD. And this is not a direct, uh, like, straightforward thing from BCCT. One of the problems is that uh, your quantum adversary can create its own randomness. So in the classical setting, suppose you had a probabilistic adversary. What you can do is you can sort of fix its randomness and make it deterministic by essentially you set a seed for its randomness and drives everything from that. In the quantum setting, you can't do this. So the solution is to define a sufficient notion of like post-quantum knowledge soundness and to prove it secure like for our construction in the quantum random oracle model. So let's move on to like recursion in practice. Here's a set of many snarks. And here are the succinct verifier snarks. So from like theory, we have that asymptotically, all of these should recurse. However, empirically in practice, we haven't seen this. Empirically, we've only been able to get like practical IVC and PCD from Gross 16, Planck, Sonic, and Marlin. This is a very restricted set. Like these are all uh, trusted setup pairing based snarks. So what is it that makes snarks suitable for recursion? Are there like transparent snarks in the set? Are there like, post-quantum ones in the set? Also, I want to add like, uh, as a slight note, uh, bulletproofs are now recursible with new techniques from Halo, but these recurse in a different sense than uh, like sort of what I showed in slide two. Like they still will achieve incremental variable computation, but uh, it'd be a different technique. I can elaborate more on this like in the questions later, 
But uh, that's all I want to like talk about Halo for now. Uh, you can also do uh, PCD. Oh, cool. Well. Good to know. Uh, so next uh, contribution is like we we identify what it is that, that the property that made these snarks like recurs well, and it's pre-processing. So a pre-processing snark is one in which like your verifier is given a small cryptographic digest of your circuit, and so now they don't have to read the entire circuit. So the next contribution is like for any pre-processing snark, the cost of uh, proving your cursive step is in a mathematical sense like effectively the same as proving your original circuit. So here on the left is the time of proving your statement plus recursion. Then uh, it's, this is a sublinear additive overhead, the time to proving your original circuit. Like so sort of categorized as little o one term. So if we, if we compare this to the prior uh, known method of recursing, what you would do is you'd start with like a snark for a machine relation where the prover wants to convince the verifier that for this machine on input X, the machine will output except within T time steps and the verifier has to read the machine description. So essentially, as you go to recurse, you have to keep on changing this machine description because you're verifying a slightly different machine each time. And to get unbounded recursion, you'll need a universal simulator, which means that you get a universal simulation overhead. So this means that you blow up the statement, the size of the statement you're proving by a multiplicative factor. In practice, like uh, it's at least greater than one. In practice, these are very large constants. So uh, this means it's a high overhead to like recurse a general uh, snark. So this tells us that like it's pre-processing that has made like PCD efficient, and therefore if we want to get efficient PCD, our goal should be to create a pre-processing snark. So that's exactly what we're going to do. The next thing we do is create a pre-processing snark for R1CS that is post-quantum and transparent. All prior constructions of pre-processing snarks were pre-quantum and like, required a trusted setup. So our construction fractal has the following asymptotics. These all match the best known like, non-pre-processing post-quantum snarks. So quasi-linear prover, logarithmic verifier, logarithmic proof size, and like proof, proof times in minutes, verifier times in milliseconds. Proof size is like standard regime for snarks in the 100 to 200 kilobyte range. But many people here are probably interested in like seeing some actual numbers and graphs for this. And we have an implementation, so we can do this. So to run fractal, you need to fix a random oracle. So we fix that as Blake 2B. And here I've plotted like uh, fractal, Aurora, Marlin, Groth. Aurora is like say they're post-quantum snark for uh, circuits. Marlin, Groth are say they're like pairing-based uh, snarks. So we see that Aurora has a linear verifier time, whereas fractal has a logarithmic one. So we've got an exponential improvement in, time, in verifier time due to pre-processing. And the constants for ver uh, verifying this like, fractal, uh, fractal proof are quite good. They're in the same regime as Marlin and close to Groth, like around 10 milliseconds. In terms of proof size, we're uh, twice as big as Aurora. It's around 100, 250 kilobytes. But this is a nice exchange, like now you get an exponential verifier time improvement. I didn't plot like Groth and Marlin here because I have to stretch the graph really far down. Their proof sizes are tiny, like one to two kilobytes. And then in prover time, uh, all these grow the same way, like n log n. And uh, the difference between the fastest and slowest snark prover is around the like, factor of 10. And uh, you know, some of this could even like be explained by differences in finite field implementation, et cetera. So now let's like go into like recursing fra uh, fractal. So what you do is you start with fractal, proven secure in the quantum random oracle model. You apply the random oracle heuristic to get it as a snark. And the random oracle heuristic is instantiating the random oracle with like a strong hash like Blake or Shaw. And you use some security carries over. And this is used in like an increasing number of snarks, like Sonic, Marlin, Plonk, Bulletproofs, Starks, et cetera. And then you recurse it to get PCD. So this gives you the first PC construction that is a post quantum, has a transparent setup, and supports arithmetic over any large field. So now we can use binary fields or fields that don't support secure elliptic curves uh, and more. So to realize recursion for fractal, first, like, the first step is always to express your verifier 
in language the snark understands, so to describe verifier in R1CS, which always leads to new efficiency considerations. So to recurse growth, you have to use pairing, or previously have to use pairing friendly cycles elliptic curves. There are a couple of talks today suggesting new ways we may be able to avoid this. And this, this induces proof overheads. So the fractal verifier has two components, algebra and hashes. And when we go to run this as a standalone snark, it's actually kind of remarkable. These are basically exa almost exactly the same. But when we go to express this in R1CS, it's more like this. Hashes are over 99% of the uh, constraint system size. So the choice of hash function is really important. If we use a standard hash like Blake or Shaw that's optimized to run well in your hardware, use a SIMD, et cetera, it runs very fast, like 200 nanoseconds. But the number of constraints each one takes is over 20,000, which means when we go to just write down fractal, we're going to have a system of size like larger than 2 to 228. We can't really run snarks this big. So instead, we have to use this new line of work called algebraic caches, which includes stuff like Poseidon, Rescue, Vision, Vimsy, and more. And now the time to do each hash is much slower. It's around like 10 milliseconds because we're doing a bunch of finite field arithmetic. But the constraints for every hash is much better, like 300-ish, which means our constraint system size is less than 2 million constraints. We can run this. Like, uh, as a general rule of thumb, like your biggest cost of recursing a thing is going to be doing cryptography inside of your snark. So like very implementation, so we can look at how it runs. Since the hash is so critical, the random oracle I'm considering is Poseidon. So uh, here I've plotted the number of constraints that you're proving in blue against the verifier size in black. It's like the verifier size of just uh, expressing the verifier for your circuit, not uh, your circuit plus the verifier. So we see that this like, recursive overhead grows logarithmically, as we'd expect. And uh, the crossover points at around like 2 million constraints are a bit under it. So this like blue shade triangles, sort of the feasible region of recursion. Taking a candidate point in here, like uh, at a circuit size of 6 million, uh, the size of the recursive of the circuit that proves C plus the verifier there is around 8 million. And in terms of like concrete times of proving things, this is a very small overhead. And since like this black line representing your verifier size grows logarithmically or like, very slowly, the, uh, the size of your recursive circuit that proves C and verifies a proof of C is around like your original circuit size plus 2 million constraints. Do you want to add a couple of important notes here that this recursive overhead is like an unoptimized proof of concept. And the prover time here is actually way slower than standalone snark. Sorry, standalone fractal. Because you have to do so many uh, Poseidon instantiations for your Merkle trees. But there's like a lot you can do to improve both these parameters. Like you can improve the prover time by, and uh, the recurse overhead. But that's all I want to say on like the theorems behind Fractal. And now I want to explain a bit how do you actually go and construct a post-quantum processing snark. So all snarks have these two parts, an information theoretic proof system and a cryptographic compiler. Add these together, you'll get a snark. So as we want a post-quantum snark, we're going to use a post-quantum graphic compiler. Since we want a pre-processing snark, we're going to use what's called a holographic proof system. More than a second. And by combining this, we'll get a post-quantum pre-processing snark that will be secure in the quantum random oracle model and transparent. So uh, to explain holographic proofs, first I'm going to go explain go back to a PCP. In a PCP, the prover wants to quince the verifier that for a circuit C, uh, it knows a witness W such that circuit on XW outputs accept. So the verifier has to know what algorithm it's verifying. And the prover is going to output this uh, large proof pi, and the verifier will check it at a couple of random locations. And so uh, because the verifier has to know what it's verifying, it runs in time at least linear in C. A holographic verifier has access to like an error tolerant encoding of your circuit. So a holographic PCP is a similar setup to as before. The prover outputs a large proof string pi, but now the verifier doesn't have access to the circuit. 
Instead, there's this third trusted entity called the indexer who, who does know the circuit and outputs the uh, encoded ne'er toller encoding of the circuit. And the verifier to check the proof will query the proof at a few random locations and query the encoded circuit at a few random locations. So since the indexer has to read the circuit, it runs in time at least linear in C, but now the verifier can run in time like much, much less than C. And now uh, the indexer is a trusted uh, party, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna transform that into a pre-processing step as follows. So first we start to take our holographic PCP, they convert it to a holographic snark. This is done using like the Macaulay transformation where essentially you, the prover like Merkleizes this proof string pi and hands a Merkle root to the verifier. And whenever the verifier wants to query uh, the proof string, it gets an authentication path as well. This is a black box thing. So this holographic snark verifier V prime just uses V as a black box subroutine. So therefore this didn't touch how uh, V prime deals with indexer. So V prime is still holographic. And then we uh, compile this into a pre-processing snark. We really are doing the same trick over again. The uh, encoded circuit is going to be Merkleized, and the indexer outputs a Merkle root. And when the verifier wants to query it, it gets an authentication path as well. So uh, this connection between holography and pre-processing was first noticed to Marlin, sorry, in Marlin. And uh, we extend it to apply to this post-quantum setting and like, work with Merkle trees, et cetera. And you can replace the Macaulay transformation with any black box transformation on a uh, information theory proof system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this to what's going to be called VCS uh, 16 to get pre-processing snark from holographic IOPs. And IOP is really just this interactive analog of a PCP, like a multi-round PCP sort of. And but, so now our goal is to make a holographic IOP. But when do we get efficient holography? Holographic PCPs were first introduced in uh, the 90s by BFLS. And a bunch of protocols have like natural holographic analogs, GKR and Aurora that are examples of this. However, like the natural encoding of a circuit is super linear. In, with GKR, your encoded circuit is going to have like, a polynomial blow up. With Aurora, we deal with R1CS. So the matrices uh, are n by n, but they're typically like sparse. And that's how you get an efficient prover. But the natural way to encode a matrix is to use a bivariate polynomial, where like one, one variable represents uh, your row index, the second variable represents your column index. And then each, uh, the, each variable in the polynomial is of degree n, which means that you'll need an n squared time pre-processing step, which you can't actually run. It's too inefficient for uh, large circuit sizes of interest. So instead, we need to use the same uh, sparsity that we use for a fast prover in our indexing. So we can, what we're going to do is we're going to make an encoding for a sparse matrix. So let's take a sparse matrix M, and we're going to describe it with uh, three vectors, uh, re vec representing the values, the row indices, and the columns. So like A here appears in row three, column one. So here it's like row three in its associated entry and uh, column one in its associated entry. And each of these vectors is uh, linear in the, si the number of non-zero entries in M. So really it's a number of non-zero entries in M. So the total uh, size of what we're encoding is uh, still linear in the number of non-zero entries, not quadratic. And in order for this to be useful, we're gonna need to wait a way to uh, recover M from these vectors in, like in algebraic fashion in order to like make our snark for it. So to do this, we introduce uh, the quality function, which as the name suggests, uh, you take the quality of two numbers is like the quality of ij equals one, i equals j, otherwise it equals zero. And then the arithmetization, or arithmetic expression, is as follows. Uh, it's just like, so m is this bivariate function, I represents the row index and J represents the column index. And we're effectively iterating over uh, this, this domain that represents the elements in the vectors. But to actually explain this equation, I'm gonna use an example. So M31. So when K equals one, row of K is uh, this entry right here, three. So equality of three comma three is 
uh, well, these are equal, so it'll output one. The quality of a uh, column of one is one. Sorry, column of one is one. So a quality of one column one is also one. So this first term in the summation is the value of one, which is a. But now for every other term in the summation, it'll be true that the row, either the row index is not three or the column index is not one. Therefore, like one of these equality, equality polynomials will be zero. So all other terms in the summation will be zero. And so uh, M31 will equal A. And hopefully it's clear that like, uh, that if the in both indices in here didn't correspond to an element of the matrix, i.e. like it was one, three right here, the, there would be no non-zero entry. So the, so the whole thing would be uh, zero, which is what we want. And then in, to make a snark for this, what you essentially do is uh, you low degree extend all of the relevant uh, polynomial vectors. If you're not familiar with this, it's essentially converting a vector into a polynomial form and then use a univariate sum check protocol uh, from Aurora. And so I wanted to talk about for like the, uh, how we construct the uh, fractal and let me zoom out and like summarize what we talked about. So first we showed that post quantum recursion yields post quantum proof carrying data. Then uh, pre-processing is what implies efficient recursion. Third, we then construct fractal, which is an efficient post-quantum pre-processing snark. And the way we got fractal was by compiling a holographic IOP into a pre-processing snark. And we use sparse matrix encodings in order to get a holographic IOP. Together, like by combining these, you get uh, the first construction of efficient post-quantum proof-carrying data. And we provide as an, uh, as an implementation, Fractal's pre-processing snark, and Fractal's a recursive snark that uses algebraic caches. Uh, thanks for your time. The paper and code are both aligned in the following links. The, the code forwards to GitHub repo. And if anyone has any questions, like, please ask. Cool. I think there are two questions, actually, in the, in the chat. Oh. Check those out. Yeah. yeah. Um, to, shall I ask the questions? Sure. Yeah, go for it. Um, so so um, how do you associate um, Poseidon, well, uh, width, oh. and um, yeah, uh, uh, let's answer that question first. Sure. So what we're doing is uh, we actually use a, uh, what is it called, a s near MDS matrix, which lets you use just as your own one in, uh, entries. So we remove them with the multiplications and MDS multiplica matrix multiplication. Uh, so, and then we use, uh, we use a small state size, like state size three, and we're on a 256 bit field. So we don't have to do any, uh, so one field element is one hash output. So this means that you don't have to like do multiple Poseidon permutations and we get to use a minimal sized uh, state vector. Mm -hmm. And I think we use uh, alpha, like this exponential parameter as 17. The reason we chose something this high was that three wasn't available. And then it turned out that by removing more rounds, we saved on time and executing. Oh, I see. That, that's slightly counterintuitive, but I, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, I, I was thinking maybe, um, so you said that using Poseidon um, increased the prover time by, what was it? Time? Factor of 10. Yeah. I was thinking maybe um, MIMC might be better because it's it doesn't have the inversions. Uh, Poseidon also doesn't have inversions. Poseidon's like... Uh, Am I confusing it with rescue? I think so. Poseidon okay. is you start with the vector, you add some like round constants, you multiply by an MBS matrix, and you exponentiate by like 3 or 17 or something. Okay. And you need like 50 rounds or something of that order. Yeah, I am confusing it with rescue. Mm -hmm. Okay. But like your middle 40 rounds only have to exponentiate like one element because those exist only for like uh, algebraic attack security, not for uh, physical, like st statistical attacks, I uh, think. Mm -hmm. did, did you try um, various different alpha to see which yeah. was most efficient? Okay. I spent a lot of time like playing around with Poseidon parameters. Yeah, we, we used rescue for Halo, but mainly because we uh, we, we only had time to um, look at one of them. Uh, <laughs> so it may be that um, Poseidon is more efficient for Halo too. Yeah, uh, 
out of circuit, like rescue took way more time. I think it ended up being a bit better on large states sizes. Hmm. In, in circuit. Any other questions? Comments? Uh, so another question, do you think it might be practical to to get the proof sizes down from hundreds of kilobytes to less than 100 kilobytes? I think so. I, I don't think we'll ever get down to like below 50 kilobytes, but I think by uh, you know, repeatedly recursing and so first, sorry, step one, improve this uh, recurse overhead. Step two, like repeatedly recurse. And there's this trick in Starks, it's kind of in the weeds, but you're, you're using read Solomon codes and you have like some rate or some blow up factor, like to write it down a degree D polynomial, I'll write it down at maybe 64 D points. I can, if I increase the number of points I write, I write it down at, I increase the prover time, but I need fewer verifier queries, which lowers proof size. Oh, I see. So if you get so this- What's the trade-off there? So how many times do you increase the proof size? Uh, the the verify uh, the sorry, how many times do you increase the prover time to get a given uh, reduction? It's, kind of, it's like this one over x thing. So uh, if I double the prover time, uh, sorry, okay, the verifier queries are like uh, are gonna be like lambda divided by bloat factor. So let's say normally we use a bloat factor like thirty two. Sorry, okay. lambda over log of bloat factor. So like we set the number of if to write down to be D polynomial, we normally write it down at 32 D points or, so it's the number of queries is like 128 over log 32 or 128 over five, which is like 40 queries. So if we double the prover time, you could then make it like 30 queries, double it again, 26 or something. I see, okay, yeah, I so, see how this goes. So the idea would be if you get the recursive overhead to be really good, then uh, you do a proof on this of the smaller size statement, but you increase the blow factor. You now get a decent, like pretty good proof size, or pretty good, like meaning under 100 kilobytes. Hmm. Yeah, I, I guess um, for recursive snarks, it's not quite as important to have a really small proof size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the idea would be to have just one proof per block. Right. Cool. Is there any other questions? Oh, this is my mic. Anyone else? I wonder, so what I'm going to be trying to do is put these videos up on the Crowdcast platform, and I feel like there will be people watching them later, so it might be worth it for you to also check out like uh, maybe we can even encourage them if they're watching this on that platform to leave questions in that chat as well uh, after the fact. So you could actually revisit that at a later time. Yeah, sure. Cool. So thank you so much. And thanks to everybody who came through. This is, this is our last talk. So wow, what a journey. And what a yeah. nice, what a nice place to, to land on too. This is a really great talk and it was great to see it. Thanks. Cool. So I guess see you all in the interwebs and tomorrow. And thank you all for coming and for bearing with us. And I feel like we're a band, like uh, we're, we've gone through the internet in all sorts in all these platforms. I feel close yeah, it, to all of you. <laughs> you. You know those cheesy films where people go down the wires and exactly. Yeah, we've been on a journey. Uh, yeah. So I guess till next time and yeah. Thanks again. See you later. Thanks, Anna.